Paul, Michael Wire, Grimes, ABC, Minneapolis, Catherine, it is always a treat getting to talk to you. I'm having such a blast with Agatha all along. So oh, thank I'm you so glad. Yeah, it's so much fun. So now, fun. It's so fun. I want to go back to WandaVision. What went through your head when your song, Agatha All Along, went viral, going so far as to even winning an Emmy for it? <laughs> I mean, uh, all of that response was so surreal. I had never really been involved in a project that that happened to. And also, it was during the pandemic, so, and I don't have social media, so it was kind of happening over there. So I would just be sent memes and clips and tweets, but I was like, couldn't see the whole of it. And, um, as, which was very, it was kind of like surreal and also in a good way distancing. So I, I, it wasn't like, you know, I was obsessed with the response. I was like, it was only till after that I, that, that when the pandemic started to like, all of a sudden people started taking off masks, that I could really feel the impact that that had had on that chapter of the pandemic on so many people's lives and how like oh. just weirdly people needed to sit around the family you know hearth the tv right. <laughs> on friday nights and watch a weekly show a program i love weekly appointment television viewing i and know isn't it, like, I need more of that in my life. And the meme of you winking is literally one of my favorite memes ever. And I send it to friends all along because it just can go so far. It so can many. go. I mean, <laughs> I've definitely been sent like, definitely not safe for work memes with like things right. underneath it where I was like, oh, oh. Uh, it makes me laugh uh, every, every time. But people really I'm, have gone far with that. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. and a good R rate. I was like, I'm glad it's such a flattering photo. <laughs> of course it is. It's you. Like, it's always flattering. I love it. Now, there's more music in the new series. You've got this great new ballad, Down the Witch's Road, where you're singing lead vocals, and three-time Tony winner Patti Lapone is in the back on supporting. How do you even prep yourself? Like, I'm singing lead, and Patti's in the back, and i got to carry this whole number. You really have to do some... Uh... Jedi mind tricks on yourself right. because if I even thought about her three doors down, three feet down, just singing back up to that, I would just freeze and nothing oh. would come out of my mouth but just like some drool and then they'd have right. to wheel me off stage. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it is bonkers. Also just a real testament to her flexibility and her generosity and her, um, just her loving an ensemble. Uh, I mean, she great. was just uh, unflappable. I love it. My husband and I have seen her in concert quite a few times, and it's so Did you stunning. see the she, recent one? Well, she came to Minnesota and sang at the Ordway, and it was all of her hits and other good songs. And then she did Torch songs at the Dakota Jazz Club, and we were, like, feet away from her. And to hear Patty do just, like, those old, rich Torch songs was so generous. We saw at the LA Philharmonic, and I think that was that show that was going around, mm -hmm. all her her life and song. Yes, and yeah. it was like, wow, it's a religious experience. It anyway, is. oh my God, when they pitched you a spin-off, how involved were you creatively in terms of like, no, I really want Agatha to go through this, or this is what the story I think should be, or did you just kind of let them go with it? They, I mean, Jack is such an incredible collaborator, Jack Schaefer, and. I mean, she had a pretty, she had a pretty solid arc when she, when we met, and it was so exactly what was supposed to happen. So I was like, yes, oh my god. And then she was like, what do you, what would you feel you missed out on if, if it wasn't in the show? So we had that kind of conversation, and like most of it, we were able to fold in in a natural way that didn't feel, and it felt like really appropriate. It all was from that arc that you know, she laid out for me. So it, nothing felt outside of it. It all felt like it was supposed to perfectly be. There wasn't yeah. much that I could even think of adding because it was so perfect. That is such a beautiful answer. And I got the rap. I wish I could keep talking. Oh, about I do thank too. I love me. Minnesota. Oh, we love you. So thank you. Please come here anytime. Yes, please. Yes. Take yes, care of yourself. You, uh, you too. Thank Take care. you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, so cheers. So, Joe, Deborah, Joe, Ali, it's so great talking to all four of you. I'm really enjoying the show and having so much fun with it. Oh, so good. Thanks.
Yeah, it's it's a blast. Now, Joe, I want to start with you. I saw you on Broadway. And so oh, wow. Uh, that's true. It was so great. Oh. So, such a beautiful voice. It was so good. You were delightful. How did you feel? What went through your head when you heard that you'd have to go and sing a ballad with three-time Tony winner Patti LaPone standing right next to you? I mean, it was almost one of those things that's like so terrifying and nerve-wracking that it's not anymore. Like, you know, when you're with Patti LaPone, it's like she's such a legend and an icon that there's, you, there's no way you can ever get to that point, so it almost makes it so much easier. It's like, there's no way I can follow that or beat that or be in the same arena of that, so I'm just gonna have fun and, and enjoy it. I kind of like that angle of it. That's yeah. really smart, that's great. Deborah Jo, you make me laugh so hard. Yes, and you know, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Paul from St. Paul, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Even though the show like isn't a broad comedy, but you have this line where you said, this came from Talbot. I know, that so many John people, I keep forgetting to tell Jack that too, but so many people have brought up that line. I think it's, Jack was saying they brought it to her as well. What? Um, how much room was there for you all to, for you to like, just bring your natural funny selves to your roles? Uh, Jack, uh, as a director, is so generous. I mean, she wrote it, but she, in, in directing, she's not precious with it. She lets you expand, you know, she, um, she lets you try anything. There was a great deal of freedom. I mean, we didn't, we didn't change a lot of words, I don't think, you know, because they were good. Uh, yeah. But we had a lot of freedom to just be who we thought the characters were, and they and she trusted us, so it was very nice. Yeah, oh, I love hearing that collaboration. Now, Ali and Sashir, this is for both of you. I think that you all bring, as characters, bring strengths, each of you bring strengths to the coven. So, Ali, what's a strength that Sashir brought to the show? And Sashir, what's a strength that Ali brought to the show? I think Sashir is so articulate and thoughtful, and she also is such a has a deep encyclopedia of Marvel lore. So that was really because a lot of us didn't didn't know as much as she did. But I really think Sashir is somebody who's such a grounding presence and always calm. And I know that I I relied on Sashir a lot on some of those long, long hard days. Um, I, I she, you just know that she sees everything, and <laughs> yeah, like she really sees everything. And so she she's very perceptive, but without making a big fuss about it. Oh, thanks, That's Allie. Beautiful. I love that. <laughs> and Allie's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Allie has, I mean, she's an amazing performer and has such a deep well of emotion that she can access pretty quickly. It was actually really amazing to watch her. And there were multiple times where I was on the other side of the camera and they were doing her coverage and I was tearing up because I was just watching this really incredible performer like, Nice. Act her ass off, yeah, it, yeah. She was really great to watch, and she's a great piano player and musician, and you get to see that in the show. And I'm so very excited for people to see <laughs> this, this multiple talented lady. Episode four. I mean, I've been loving every episode, but like episode four really gets you deep. Yeah. So have a congrats on that. Oh, that was really you. special. Thank you. Yeah, I know, Joe. There's a line, and maybe Sashir can add to this too. There's a line about Patty that Patty says about misconceptions and rumor mongering with witches. So, what do you think are some misconceptions about Marvel? Oh, that's a good. Oh, that's good. good. Thank you. That it's just for like straight white men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not. not. Correct, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this show uh, can, shows how deep Marvel can get. Like, this show has so much depth as far as, like, um, an emotional history, the rawness that these characters go through, and and I hope that makes them think that Marvel's capable of doing more than just, you know, like, flashy, big yeah, the level, blockbuster the stuff. The level of artistry, like, the yeah. sets and the costumes, like, it isn't just commercial. Like, there's so much care put into the details, and um, every department was just so elevating all, everyone else's work, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my god, the costumes are stunning, especially when you get to, like, different decades or kind of playing with different TV shows. Don't want to spoil anything. I'm getting the rap. Joe, cannot wait for Heartstopper season three. Oh, thank my you. god, I love that show so much. So, Oh, hope to talk to you and Kit for that as well. So thank you for the time today. I appreciate it, y'all. Thank, thank you. you. Great question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.